Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. How you guys doing out there today? Welcome everybody. How you doing? Sorry about being late. I, you know, uh, I would say a whole bunch of different stuff, but what I am saying is real simple. Windows had decided that they wanted to upgrade the system right when I pushed play 15 minutes ago. So you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Yep, you totally, totally gotta love that whole thing. Anyway, well, I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, and welcome to the dark side of the room. That's right. This is the show where we talk about being nerds and geeks and gamers, and I totally forgot to silence my phone. But yeah, we talk about all that jazz. Yeah, now, yeah, that's right. Shut up, shut up, shut up, phone. Yeah, we talk about all that jazz um, to be like, all right, cool, yeah, let's talk about some stuff. And we do it from the perspective of my life experience, my stories, and just a lot of the stuff that's been coming down. Why? Because, well, I don't think I'm super unique. I think a lot of you guys out there might be just like me and have a lot of similar experiences, especially when it comes to being a nerd. So what I'm going to do real quick is um, I put out like the whole things and and, uh, sayings and all that stuff out there. And I just want to check to see who's in and all that jazz. So um, I'm checking to see what's going on. But of course, I got to do the business thing because y'all know how that goes. Um, And what business thing am I talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about, well, doing what I got to do to make sure that we can get the bills paid and all that stuff. So bear with me. Or if you guys have something to say about it, that's cool. This is your chance to speak up by sending me um, a letter by doing something real simple. That's do 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 do. But da 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 da. Send me an email at backinthedeck at gmail.com. Let's see. B A C K I N T H E D E C K at gmail.com. And yeah, we're doing all that stuff. Hit us up on the social medias. All the stuff is right there. I'm trying to do this a lot faster because that's a whole lot of time. And this show is only an hour long. So check out all that stuff. Hit up the social medias, the Instagram the Twitter. If you're part of all of that wretched hive of scum and villainy that we call Facebook, then um, join Deckers on the, on the book. And that's where you get to talk to us more directly. Just be like, hey, what's going on? What's up? Ah, bah, bah. To not just me, but all the other Deckers out there. And of course, um, check us out over on SoundCloud because, well, how can I put this? SoundCloud helps us out. Now, when I say help us out, I mean, send us some money, send us some kind of money, but you don't have to pay your own money. You don't have to pay your own money at all. No, no, no. Um, you can do a couple of things. One, if you've got an Amazon prime account, then you can subscribe to us here on Twitch for absolutely nothing. If you've got an Amazon prime account. And given the days that we're doing this whole thing, uh, you probably have an Amazon Prime account. So just hit on over, um, give us one of those little subscription things, and um, you'll be helping us out by helping us keep the lights on. If you want to help us out in a more direct manner, I would appreciate that a whole bunch. And you can do that by heading over to... Oh, wrong button. Heading over to uh, patreon.com slash bid underscore p. Become a patron um, just like one of our dudes did yesterday. Um, And we've got a whole bunch of stuff there. Um, And this is the quickest, easiest and most reliable way to get access to our archive. Um, If you miss an episode and all that stuff, that would be, you know, an easy way to do it. Um, I've got some, I, I, I've got perks and all that stuff like this guy here. This is a dice roller. Mwah, adorable. And, um, and of course we've got this lady here that you see I was using last night. Both of these are dice rollers and all that stuff. And yeah, this is our lady of perpetual botching. So, um, with all that stuff 
do that jazz and help us out a lot by helping us keep the lights on um i don't like using language like oh if you do this it'll help us out if you do that it'll help us out it's real simple this job don't pay a whole lot and by don't pay a whole lot i mean oh my god um we're only kept alive by viewers like you and of course by people who um you know people who subscribe and sign up and all that stuff that way we can get our meager little checks so that we can pay the internet bill pay for all this equipment and this stuff is not cheap it's also a really difficult thing to maintain and i've got the choice of paying hundreds of dollars to fix something when it breaks or pay fewer hundreds of dollars to replace it when it breaks so um why am I going on this diatribe today? Because that's partly what our stuff is about. Um, today, uh, I got to put on the calming music because today's subject has got me a little bit on edge. Now, make no mistake. This is the show that puts me on edge because this is where I get personal with you guys and tell you a little bit about my, um, my experiences and my life story as a nerd. Now, a couple of weeks ago, um, I will say, um, I put up a Facebook post on my personal page saying that the anxiety finally hit, and a lot of people have it. Um, yeah, a lot of people have anxiety, especially nowadays that we're on, what, day 18, day 19 of, um, of quarantine, lockdown, and all that stuff. So, um... We all have our things. As any of you are on the show and any of the Deckers know, I am an extreme extrovert, extreme extrovert. And not being able to interact with people in person has just taken its toll on my brain needs. Yeah, I'm turning down the music. Now I got you guys. I, I got you. I got you. Yeah, so how's that? So, um, and the other night I was up um, sort of having an anxiety attack because anxiety is real and it happens to a lot of us. Um, but what does an anxiety attack look like? Well, it looks like a lot of different things to a lot of different people. In my case, um, it is the standard size, increased heart rate. Um, but most of the time, it's a spiral of thoughts. And with the post-traumatic stress disorder, it's a spiral of thoughts that lead to reliving trauma. And today's episode is about a particular type of trauma that I've accumulated uh, mostly over the over my adult life. But it did take root when I was a child. And it was based in this idea of tough love. Okay, I'm going to state this right out. My personal opinion about tough love is my opinion about everything else. It has a time. It has a place. But with this one, the time is not always now. The place is not always here. And the people who do it <laughs> really need training. They really need training on uh, when to do it, how to do it, when it's effective, when it's not. Um, as you guys know, I grew up very disenfranchised. Um, I grew up in a place with not very high a budget. Um, I had more privileges than a lot of people in my neighborhood, but, um, but that's like, what is a good term to use at that? Oh yeah. That's like having half of a crust of a slice of bread around a bunch of starving people. You're not going to get full. And they're just going to hate you for having more food than they do, even though what you have is just enough to make you hungrier. Um, and when I was growing up, growing up in the black community in the 80s and the 90s, there's a thing that people don't quite get. Um, black families don't really have a whole lot of sensitive moments not a whole lot of i love you son i love you you're doing good you're doing a great job um part of that was stuff that we learned on the plantation generations ago where if you praise your child for something good 
that gives the slave master a reason to look at your child and eventually a reason to sell your child. So the tradition of praise was never really passed down. Okay. Um, now that's the foundation. That's the bottom stuff. That's the stuff from the early 1980s when I was, you know, checking out stuff like Bucky O'Hare, uh, Captain Bucky O'Hare and Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys in the 90s. But over the course of my adult life, um, I've had some amazing friends, like really, really amazing friends. Um, I make it a habit of collecting exceptional people. And though I collect exceptional people, people are still people. And there was a time where a good amount of people that I was around um, from, I would say, high school on. They didn't have a full comprehension of where I came from. And their versions of trying to help sometimes um, was showing tough love. And what is tough love? Well, the idea of tough love is being hard on someone that you care about in order to help them improve. Okay. You see this a lot in places like the military, um, disciplinary actions, things like that. Um, but here's a funny thing about being under 40. Um, my great grandmother used to say no one has any sense until they're 40 and only if they're lucky. A lot of people, um, you know, when you're in your 20s and your 30s, it's early adulthood. And that is such a difficult time in a person's life because we're supposed to be adults. We're supposed to know what we're doing. And the world treats us like we know what we're doing. And if we don't know what we're doing, then we're judged lacking. And we are, what is the term, reprimanded for not knowing but the reprimandation only comes in the form of a punishment and never has instruction. Okay. Um, you see it all over the internet. Oh my God, how can you not know this? Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bitch, I didn't, I don't play video games. How can I, how can you expect me to know something that's in a world that I'm not in? And this is why I have to bring up the age thing. Most people don't have the resources or the wisdom to understand that the way that they see the world is not the sum total of the way that the world operates. Okay. Uh, most people can't really conceptualize things outside of their block, their school, their workplace, or their own experiences we need to learn to take a look through the eyes of someone else that whole empathy thing and walk a mile in a man's moccasins um and a good amount of the people that i've been around since i was about 15 never really understood where i came from so their attempts to help tended to be based in what they knew from their culture okay um so this is an interesting place it's an interesting place to be in because when it comes to tough love most folks when they experience tough love i mean the receiving end of it they experience it from a parent or from a boss or from a teacher or something like that and um part of early adulthood is aping or parroting i.e repeating actions from the past without a deep understanding of what it's meant to do where it comes from and how it applies if it applies now when i was growing up um i got a lot of tough love and my mom was, I mean, she was, she was tough. I can talk for days about how many beatings I ended up getting growing up. It was like, 
Um, you did something bad, you got beat. You did something half good, you got beat. You did something perfectly, you got beat for showing that you were capable of doing it perfectly and that you didn't do it perfectly previously. Um, and this is, this is not because my mom was a cruel person, but this was my mom aping the behavior that had been passed on to her. You see where this is coming from? And thus the sins of the father are passed on to the son, even to the seventh generation. Um, and growing up, I was in high school and I have a friend and I call him a friend. I call him, um, I call him a brother. And the truth is, I don't like him very much because he passes down that behavior. He apes a whole lot and he's so busy trying to be right and trying to show that he's the best that he pushes people under the bus to preserve his own internal opinion about himself. And um, this scarred me a lot because I have a lot of friends that do that. Um, and I know, I know it's easy to say, well, if they, if they were your friends, they wouldn't, if they're my friends, they don't do it intentionally. Okay. And the friends that I keep around now are able to hear that they're doing that. They can take a look at it and they take my words seriously without snapping to defense and giving excuses. Okay. Now, when it comes to tough love, I remember back in the early 2000s, someone did that because I was going through a hard time. And I said, you are not capable of giving me tough love because you have never shown me love. Okay. Now it's really cool in movies and outside. Um, <laughs> um, it, 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 it's, it, it, it's really interesting and cool to think of those moments of tough love in movies and television. You know what I mean? Um, in the Academy Award winning Suicide Squad movie, got to show my respect, even the garbage. Um, <laughs> there was a moment where Will Smith's Deadshot looked over at token Latino Aztec guy and got him mad in order to have him use his powers, right? It was like, I had to get you there. I had to push you. And it was like, yeah, you know, he he yelled at him and he, he berated him. And he's like, oh yeah, you want to see what I can do? You want to see what I can do? Fine. And it's great to think that you can antagonize someone to greatness. But when looked at that scene a little deeper, you can see that lives were on the line. They were literally under gunfire, or actually no, they weren't under gunfire. They were literally about to be killed by faceless extras in terrible makeup. <laughs> um, so that would be the time to antagonize someone to greatness, okay? Um, and the idea of being like, you know, um, the whole idea, this is that, that cycle, and it makes me think of Christopher Titus saying, you know, when he was a kid, he was like, you know, hey dad, um, yeah, I was thinking I might want a bike, and, and his dad would reply, well, a real man would get a job. So he went out and he got a job, and it's like, look, dad, I got a job, I bought my own bike, aren't I doing good? Well, the real man would be manager. So he worked even harder and he became manager, and it was, you know, all right, that's cool, I've got my thing, I got my bike, I'm the manager, I got all these responsibilities, and it's like, well, real man, you know, would own his own business. And he finally came back. He's like, you know what, dad, I got my own business. I have my own company. I made my own TV show. I made more money last year than you did the entire time I was growing up in school. What do you think about that? And you wouldn't have got there without me pushing you all those years. And all it's doing is stealing victory. You know, now there is a place for tough love. As I was saying a little earlier, the time to antagonize someone into greatness is when their lack of greatness is an immediate and clear danger to them okay now we see this all the time around the game table um and in this hobby okay in this hobby there's a whole bunch of tough love and i mean not just the hobby of making videos but the hobbies of being around a game table and this is one of the reasons that i don't reach out to people to play games anymore 
Um, remember when I was talking about the expecting of and the expectation of having knowledge that one never really had one? This idea of if you are going to do X, you need to know um, A through W. But the tough love comes in telling someone, dude, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know crap. Let me show you how to improve. But that's not what happens. It's you don't know crap. Come back when you learn. And going over a lifetime of that at the game table and at other places really did a number on me. Because when a person is turned away for lack of something, lack of money, lack of knowledge, lack of cultural understanding, lack of being a part of. They get caught in this this catch-22 of come back when you're part of. But think about a hallway, okay? Think, just think about a hallway. Or better yet, think of credit, all right? You don't get credit until someone gives you credit. And if no one has ever given you credit, then no one has a reason to give you credit. This is maddening. And so many peers do what they can to try and help. And in a lot of my experiences, a lot of my peers try turning to tough love because they didn't know what else to do. Um, I get that. In truth... I love you guys. As Deckers, you guys, you're my people, and I'm here for you. And I can be honest by saying I ain't always the easiest person to get through to. Not because I'm stubborn, but because I'm ignorant of my own ignorance, okay? Um, a good amount of the time when I'm dealing with people, and you guys might experience this too, okay? Um, most people in this day and age do not speak directly they think they speak directly and they speak directly for their crowd for their background for their culture but direct speech is speech that transcends culture okay um i like the way the sky looks today might mean the sky is clear and i enjoy it to one set of people but to some another set of people, like those who grew up in the inner city, they might mean the chemicals in the air are painting the sky really nice colors. So one might mean the sky is clear. The other might mean the sky is all but clear. But when neither party understands what the other person means because of cultural context, by definition, neither one of them are speaking directly. Now, if one person said, it is raining and that is making the sky clear, and I like when the sky is clear, that is far more direct, okay? And um, I know for a good amount of my adult life, I had a problem dealing with people who spoke indirectly because their culture was always trying to tell them that it is better to be unclear than it is to be impolite. And the tough love always came out of frustration because I never understood what they meant. Never understood. Um, we have this thing that we call social cues, right? You know, and we laugh sometimes because, oh yeah, Ron doesn't get social cues, so don't deal with Ron. And my thing was always, well, if Ron doesn't understand social cues, why not tell him directly? And it's, oh no, I can't do that. I'll be terrible. Um, and what people call tough love tends to come out as direct speech that's born out of anger and frustration from people not understanding the subtleties of language. Now, I'm not here to cast blame. As I said, I'm, I believe that there's a time and place for everybody. You know, um, my personal stance is what is the purpose of, of the communication? Okay. If you're trying to communicate with someone, you should stop doing this. You're hurting yourself. 
than to say, well, the idea of a long coat on a hot day is kind of bizarre. That opens up a conversation of how it's bizarre, why does it matter, all that other stuff. And that was always where I took it. Um, Number one reason is I come from a culture of you do as you're told, you say what you mean, you mean what you say, and um, it's not on you to figure out what they mean but it's your job to do as they tell you. Because if you interpret poorly, if you don't know what they mean and you act on what you think, then you will be punished. You know, in the 21st century, that means you'll be exiled or fired or evicted. And that goes all the way back to the plantation of whipped and sold, okay? This is one of the reasons that I've always had a hard time communicating with people in the suburbs because I don't know what people mean, but I understand the consequences if I misinterpret. That's a lot of pressure. So I do a lot of things. I make videos, I do crafting, you know, all all this stuff. And it's all documented. You, You guys can look at the YouTube channels and all that stuff. You can see what I do. And the trauma of this tough love came from an overabundance of criticism coupled with a lack of constructive praise. Okay. This is why tough love can be a bad idea. Um, I, I talk a lot about my music. Um, I never wanted to be a musician, okay? Never did. I really focused on becoming a musician because I made a promise to someone I loved very deeply. And I'm a man of my word to the best of my ability, okay? Um, But there were many, many people over the course of my time as a bass player that never gave me praise. They always said what was wrong. Well, not always said what was wrong. That's the wrong word. They mainly said what was wrong. Um, The criticisms, and this was big in the Renaissance Fair community, which is one of the reasons I had to leave. One of the biggest things is, well, there are 16 things that are wrong that you need to improve. And one thing that you're great at, but we won't even let you know that there's anything that you're great at. All we'll tell you is how you suck. Your timing is off. You're, you're, uh, you hit the wrong note at your 27th minute of play. Forget the fact that you played for 27 minutes straight without a break. You made one wrong mistake in the thousands of notes that you did. Therefore, you suck. You absolutely suck. You're terrible. You're an idiot. You should quit. Or you should buckle down and do it. Although you already buckle down for 10 hours a day. You, you, you see where that comes down? You know, and the thing is, tough love without the love is abuse. It's just plain abuse. Unintentional as it is, but it's still abuse. And what does this do? Well, most people do it because, well, I was just trying to help you get better. Well, the military does that. Okay. The military tears you down nothing to build you into what it wants you to be. Here's the difference between a regular person and the United States military. A person is a person. The military has hundreds of psychologists, <laughs> doctors, teachers, instructors, and coaches to create a program and to br- well to brainstorm you know to to brainstorm techniques that would work why they work what the what the person in boot camp can be told and what they can't be told 
Okay. They've done studies. They've done the research. In short, they are experts at this because they have groups of people, groups of specialists, groups of people that have authority in how to put this together. And they've taken classes on how to do it. And if you don't believe me, talk to any former Marine. They all have a story of watching a drill instructor yell and scream at a tree to get all of their creative insults down. <laughs> you know, um, but the whole idea of I'm just trying to make you better, that tough love that comes down is not a good idea. It's not a good idea unless you know what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish. And if there's no other way. Okay, that, that's a really big thing. If you have tried everything in your arsenal and you've expanded your arsenal, then, <laughs> you know, then at that point, if none of that works and you've weighed whether or not the desire that you have for something is reasonable, if all of those are, are there and the only options are tough love or death, okay, yeah, go ahead. You, you, you use tough love. I mean, it, it, it's really one of those things you know and i mean like imminent death not if you don't quit smoking you're going to get cancer in 20 years um this is a really big thing because for decades i've had a lot of people on me like you know your martial arts isn't good you need to practice harder your music isn't good you need to practice harder your your broadcast well you need to up your video quality you need to get better equipment you need you need you need you need you need but I'm not going to help you until you do. That's tough love in the eyes of a lot of people. And the fact is, it doesn't work. All it does is scar. And I'm saying this flat out there because I can't sleep at night because of these scars. So how do I handle it? Well, sometimes I go through. Sometimes I look at footage from way 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 back when i wasn't as good as i am now okay um and i keep in mind that no one is the best and i keep in mind my own intentions i don't want to be the best musician out there i don't want to be the best um youtuber don't want to be the best person on twitch i do not want to be number one I don't, okay? I, I, I really don't. Um, I, I, I used to think about being the best, and maybe this is TV influencing me as, as a young one, but there's an episode of The Twilight Zone where this dude wanted to be the best pool player ever, and he ended up um, playing a game against the ghost of the previous best ever. And that ghost didn't get to rest after he died because part of being the best is always competing to make sure, like to let the world know that you're still number one. I don't care that much about anything, okay? I don't want to walk the world like an American um, interpretation of an anime character looking for the best person that lives in this village in some country I can't even pronounce the name of. But most people who give tough love, they may not, um, they may not want you to be the best, but they're always trying to make you better. And here is where the tough love really, really does the most damage when it's unsolicited. Okay. If a person that you know is really bad at something. Even when they're suffering the Dunning-Kruger effect where they think they're great, but they're terrible at it. Um, it's not on you or on me to be hard on them to make them better. Okay. Now, if they come up and say, hey, what do I need to do to improve? Then you can let them know what they need to improve. But here's the thing. Let them know with compassion and let them know directly and clearly, 
okay? Someone once told me that I should get um, 4K cameras for the channel. And that's great. Maybe one day I should. I'll probably get 4K cameras when I upgrade my entire setup so that I can output at 4K. But most of the streaming software that's out there that lets me up here, if it can do 4K, it requires a monthly fee and we don't make enough money from here to upgrade on that. I mean, that's just what it comes down to. Um, I've had people tell me that I shouldn't do this at all until I can get a business loan. If I can't get a business loan, then what I'm doing is gonna suck. It's not gonna live up to their quality. They're not gonna watch, they're not gonna help. I should quit and I should just go and die somewhere. Needless to say, I don't associate with those people in regards to what I do here, okay? But the ones who, the ones who stick around, the ones who stick around and the one that I try and be, is to allow people to be the best they can. And when they come to me for guidance, I give them guidance in the most clear manner possible. Now, this makes a lot of people not like talking to me, primarily because I'm so verbose. And I'm that way to be clear, okay? I'm that way because if I assume that a person knows exactly what I mean, in my experience, a lot of miscommunication has happened, and then once miscommunication happens, people want to start throwing blame, blah, 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 and it's nothing but work, work, work all the time, <laughs> you know? Um, so when I communicate, I try. I do my best to give context for what I'm saying and um, to give examples of what I talk about so I can communicate clearly. But I don't practice tough love. In truth, I don't know how, okay? Um, I don't, I don't tell people that they need to, you know, um, I, I'm not mean to people. I don't antagonize people to greatness because I don't know how to do that. I really don't. Um, now that doesn't mean that people don't get upset at things I say. Okay. But the difference between miscommunication and tough love is tough love is meant to antagonize. It is meant to hurt in order to make someone better. I don't know how to do that. I know how to hurt people. <laughs> I know how to tear someone's feelings completely apart and make them feel like they are the worst people in the world and how they don't deserve to be born. I've learned how to do that. But I don't do that unless that's my intention. And I'll tell you honestly, it very rarely is. It very rarely is to make someone just curl up and die, okay? Um, so since I don't know how to antagonize someone to greatness, I don't do it. It's just like I don't know how to fly a helicopter. That ain't something I can wing <laughs> because I don't want to hurt people. I don't, I don't want to cause the same type of trauma that I live under in someone else, you know? That's where I sit. And something tells me deep down in places that I don't talk about at parties. Oh, uh, that's where you guys are too. You know, um, you know, it, it, it's one of those really big things. Now, a lot of people, um, a lot of people try and practice tough love out of their own frustration. Like I said, they don't know what else to do. And they're frustrated with the situation. They're frustrated with themselves. They're frustrated with a lot of things. So where does this conversation go? Okay, where does it go? Um, what I try and practice today at the game table, at um, in conversation with people is when I notice that they're trying to show tough love, I do my best to pull them aside because people get hurt. Um, and I'm like, look, if you're frustrated at the situation, we can stop the conversation. If I'm not picking up what you're throwing down, then instead of throwing it down, hand it to me. What are you trying to say to me? Say it directly, in private, you and me, right here, so no one thinks you're a dick for saying something that they would think you're a dick for. You know, what? what what's actually going on? Talk to me in earnest and talk to me in good faith. You know, and that's been an interesting journey 
um, a good amount of my friends <laughs> were always taken aback by that. But I think one of my closest ones actually did that once. And he saw that I took it as he was putting it out. We came to an agreement. I lived up to my agreement. And 15 years later, we're still friends because he knows that he can just talk to me. He can tell me what's up. He can tell me what's wrong. He doesn't have to practice tough love, but he can with love show me how I can improve, be it improve in social situations or improve with skill sets or just improve in interacting with him. And that is something that I really, really want to help all of us do a little bit better, you know, just, just a little bit. Um, this whole isolation and quarantine thing, it's got a lot of people on edge. <laughs> it does. And there's a lot of pent up frustrations in a lot of people, a lot of stuff that's coming out. And we might want to practice tough love. I know many, many times I've looked at my Facebook feed going, look, you just need to listen. And, blah, 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 blah. and then I realize, you know what? Uh, I'm just too tired. <laughs> I'm just too tired. And I do, hang on, I dropped my keyboard. Keyboard dropping and all that other stuff. So many things. One of these days. Oh. Yeah, one of these days. And there we go. Yeah, had to fix that. Oh uh, yeah, one of these days I'll, um, I'll have other producers in here. But in the meantime, um, I get it. You know, I would normally go somewhere like, you know, I would go to the park and go a few rounds on a tree, you know, just kind of, oh, 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 I got to hit something. Uh, uh, uh. Can't hit it too hard. or I'm going to break my body and I don't have medical insurance. So um, I get it. And um, and I get wanting to practice tough love. One of my oldest friends right now um, is a truther and and, and a birther and is saying that this whole thing is a conspiracy. But instead of having that confrontation with them, I back off. I, I, I have to back off because again, it would be me practicing unsolicited tough love. And unsolicited tough love is traumatic to the person on the receiving end. Not to mention tough love without previously establishing that there's love, that's also traumatic. And I'm not about hurting people, you know? Um, now I'm gonna put this out there real quick. Being direct ain't always easy. Um, I know one of my big things, having lived in so many different cultures just in the United States and having to learn so much different language um, what's direct to some isn't direct to others. So I try and stick with dictionary definitions when I need to be absolutely unquestionably clear. Okay. Um, huh, no active subtitles. I'm aware. Hang on. The subtitle track came on and blah, 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 blah. Nope, nope, nope. I don't want subtitles on this. Okay. That's just weird. I have no active subtitles. Isn't that fun? Um, let me fix that real quick. Doo, doo, doo. Oh, no, no. Nope. Okay, we're just going to go over here. Make these a little bit bigger. And then boom. All right. Let's hope that works. Um, so, yeah, this is this is a really big thing about being direct. Of course, one of my big things is I'm direct about everything that I talk about all the time. So people that are talking with me, well, <laughs> I can say that one of the biggest complications I have with new friends is the new friends, um, the new friends have a hard time understanding me because they're always looking for their socially acceptable subtext. And then when they find out that with me, there is none, they're like, um, okay, I don't exactly know how to deal with that. And I'm like, no, there really is none. You know, I say, I want to go have a cup of coffee. 
with you, I mean, I want to have a cup of coffee with you. Um, you know, I, I once had a new friend that was like, are you trying to get into my pants? And I'm like, no, I'm trying to have a cup of coffee. Do I want to get into your pants? I don't know you well enough yet to make that decision. So the jury's still out. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I'm in your league and I don't know if you're in my league. So, you know, I'm having this cup of coffee to find out what kind of person you are and to know what position that you that I might be able to put you in in my life that won't hurt me with expectation, you know, and that threw them back because they weren't used to someone being so frank. But over time, they were like, I'm glad that you were that honest with me. And those are the type of people that I like having around, you know? Um, you might ask, what are the things that prompted this? And um, there's someone here over in MP City. And these guys, yeah, they're having a real conversation. I love that you guys are holding it down, guys. Seriously, that is big. Um, one of the things that got me on this was... I was checking out some stuff from some of my more successful friends and they were talking about the nature of transactional relationships here in Los Angeles, how people say things like, oh no, I'd love to spend some time with you, but I'm really, really busy. And again, I give you guys, you Deckers, all the people that watch my show, I give you guys the best of me that there is. But there is a very angry man in here. A very angry man. And I was talking to my mom about it the other night because I'm stuck at taking people at their word since I don't understand the subtext of their meanings. And that makes things difficult. Because sometimes they might be busy. And other times they mean they don't want me in their lives because I don't have anything to offer them that they want. And I was explaining to my mom, I can take rejection because um, I'm not for everybody. Not everybody's for me. And I look at rejection as a gift. If somebody doesn't like, well, one, I deal with everyone genuinely as who I am angry, intelligent, bizarre, but honest. And if people don't want that in their lives, cool. That's less work on my part. <laughs> I'm good with that. Um, but what I don't like is people wasting my time and my effort. So if it's like, well, I don't really want them in my life, but I don't really want to say so because I might hurt their feelings. I'm like, number one, you're BSing. Okay, you're just a BS artist. All right. It's not that you care about hurting my feelings. You're trying to maintain your image of yourself. And if you would just come flat out and set it, then you wouldn't have to stress. I wouldn't waste my time. I just erase your phone number and get on with the life that I had before you entered it. But no, they're, they're trying to be nice. And this is the stuff that does keep me up at night because they would rather be nice and dishonest and, you know, activate a lot of issues of rejection and all that other stuff, you know, because again, I do, I do have rejection issues, but I can take direct rejection. You, you get what I'm saying? But when people present a problem like, ooh, I would love to, except there is this thing standing in the way. Um, I solve the problem that's standing in the way. Like, if you would really love to, then let's let's do that. Let's get this. If you're busy on Thursday, let's talk about Friday. You know what? I can even go for like a week from now. You know, yeah, we can we can do something like a week from now, Um, <laughs> you know. And, um, yeah, it, it really is one of those really big things. Like, you know, I'll make an appointment for a week from then, but once I'm committed to making an appointment with you, then I'm not going to make any alternative plans because I owe you the respect to commit my time once I've committed my time. But a lot of people don't do that. And do I practice tough love on that? No, because they really don't care about the effects they have on other people. They're very busy looking out for themselves. 
they're afraid that I want something from them. And this has created a world that is almost difficult to operate in without crying yourself to sleep at night at least once every six months. And you'll see a lot of talk out there about change. I'm not a big proponent of change. I don't want things to change. I want them to improve. I want us to be better to each other. I want to live in a world where our self-esteem isn't so rocky. And I'm trying to make at least a section of the world to where it's okay to be who you are, but that doesn't mean it's okay to treat people poorly. You see the difference between those things? And, um, and yeah, so just the idea of how much people tell me that they're busy. And I've started erasing phone numbers out of my thing, you know? And it's like, that led me to this whole tough love thing, you know? It's like, some people are like, no, you suck. You need to get better. I'm only trying to help you improve. Don't be mad at me. I was only trying to help. These people can eat corn out of my excrement, okay? Um, versus, well, you already have my information and you were part of my life at one point, but I don't want you there anymore. So I'm always busy when it comes to you. And I'm like, you know, that's just cowardice. And I don't have the time or energy for people that are that kind of cowardly, especially when the foremost part of our relationship was showing me tough love. You get where I'm going with that? So that's where I'm at. And the trauma that that tough love inflicted is something that I'm still working my way through. So the big reason that it's not a good idea is because you might not really understand the damage you're doing to the person when you practice tough love. But one thing I've never, I've never really seen a whole lot of long-term stuff from is compassion and empathy being traumatic. When a person genuinely tries to understand where another person, um, you know, when another person genuinely tries to understand the other person's point of view from where they're coming from and speak to them from that place, I have very rarely seen actions that are there leave psychological or emotional scarring, you know? And, um, it, it, it really is that, you know, and, and that's what I wanted to talk about today because I know all of us here are nerds in one form or fashion, and we have friends that are nerds in one form or fashion. So I am betting, I'm betting my time and my income that we have people in our lives that have that same scarring that same um i'm just trying to you know i'm just trying to push you to be better and i gotta be hard on you to do that although they don't know what your favorite color is and a lot of them are coming from a place of that's what someone else had done to them it's that cycle and that gets difficult to interact with um a few days ago when I was up at four o'clock in the morning, just going through all that, I, I looked like a wizard in, in, on a seeking because I was a wizard that was going through some stuff. Um, <coughs> I posted on my Facebook that the anxiety had hit and I'm taking a break. <laughs> I am. I'm just I'm taking a break. And a lot of people must have took that as like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm jumping off the Vincent Thomas bridge. I'm out of here. No, I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm backing off of Facebook for a while. I can't take what's in my, uh, what's in my, um, what's in my, um, I can't take what's in my feed. And I don't really have the energy 
to go through my feet, deleting people and putting other people on block or being in yeah, all that stuff. I'm doing that gradually, you know. But yeah, the fact of the matter is um, there's a lot of negativity out there. A lot of people are frustrated and a lot of people are trying to cope in the only ways they know how. Now, make no mistake, I am all for teaching someone how to do it differently. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm going to be perfectly honest about that. When someone says, I don't mean to be mean, I just don't know how not to be mean. I'm like, all right, then in order to keep me in your life, you're going you gonna to learn. You're going to learn because I will teach you. And if you are unwilling to learn, I am not unwilling to walk away from our relationship. <laughs> it, it, it really is that simple. You know, one of my big things out there is to never be mad at someone for not knowing something unless you are willing to help them learn. If not, teach them. You know, um, that's where I'm at. But if they don't know and they're unwilling to learn, that's a problem. Now, I know if I have some old friends in the audience that's listening right now, I want to make one thing clear. I know that a lot of my friends were trying to teach me and this is this is a big thing and we might talk about this next week okay <laughs> um teaching is a skill and it is something that has to be developed um i've lost a lot of friends because they were trying to teach me to be better but they didn't know how to teach well hell most of the time i didn't even know i was being instructed and some of the friends were so busy being egotistical because it was finally their turn to be superior that they didn't quite know what they were doing. And some of them just never knew how it was that I learned. And a good amount of them didn't listen when I told them what I needed in order to learn, you know, um, and so I'm not broad brushing my friends as terrible people. And 21st century America, y'all need to let go of this good person, bad person narrative because it's not doing you any good. Okay. Um, I'm not going to say there's no such thing as good people or bad people in the world, but the things that make people feel like they're bad people, it, it's just not true. It really isn't. People make mistakes. Everybody does a racism every once in a while. Um, I personally believe that most Americans are soft racists. Um, and by that, I mean, they do acts that they don't even realize are offensive or marginalizing. Just like I think that most Americans are soft sexists. You know, I catch myself in it all the time. I don't think that makes me a bad person. I just think that makes me someone who is still learning and there's nothing wrong with still learning. You know, just because you're an adult doesn't mean that you're done. Okay. If you're still breathing and you don't know what the 418,000th molecule in your North Northwest field of vision is doing, you don't know everything. So there's still something left to learn, you know, and not knowing don't make you a bad person, regardless of what your culture tells you, because honestly, bad people do horrible things with the intention of doing horrible things. But good people do horrible things most of the time accidentally. <laughs> but having an accident doesn't make you a bad person. You know, it's, it's like calling a kid a terrible person and a waste of human flesh for peeing in the bed. Nah, that that ain't the way. You know, that that's that's not how that's not how living works. You know? Um a lot of people don't know a lot. As my great grandmother said, a person don't get any it, they don't get any wisdom. They don't they don't know what they're doing until they're 40. And even then, if they're lucky, all right, all right, that's that's a real big thing. So seriously, you know, I ain't saying that people are good. People are bad. No, 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 no. I, I don't I don't see through that lens. OK, the lens I see through is. The actions, if the actions that you perform cause suffering, they deserve to be 
observed and critiqued and critiqued i mean examined you know if you're trying to do harm and you're doing harm good job if you're not trying to cause harm if you're not trying to cause trauma and you're doing so anyway it might be time to re-examine what it is that you're doing and where that trauma is coming from and the person that it's being caused at you know um one of the one of the reasons that we talk about games here is because games are complex <laughs> You know, especially tabletop role playing games, most of them come with very, very complex rules. No matter how much they try and simplify, there's still a lot of complexity. Try and learn how to play Hero Clicks or D&D and you'll get that, you know. And the reason that I'm a big fan of them and we make this make games the primary place that we meet on is that games are complex just like people and just like adulthood. Okay. As much as we want to reach out for the simple solution, most of the time, the simple est solution is a matter of complex uh, machinations. It's that's just the way that things are. But um, man, the chat is really just going off today. <laughs> Love you guys. Yep. Good old Gil. You know, talking about good old Gil. So with that, though, um, I gotta say, I want to thank you guys for being here today. Um, major thanks to the chat. Major thanks to um, our patrons out there that help keep the lights on. Specifically, Shannon Boom Boom Lay, um, His Majesty um, Paul Mansfield, and of course, our ace in the hole, Jennifer Crow. Um, if you guys like what I have to say, or want to, or want to rebut, or retort, or discuss any of the things that we talked about today, um, well, guess what? It's too late. But <laughs> you can always send me an email over at backinthedeck at gmail.com. That's b a c k i n t h e d e c k at gmail.com. Um, reach out to us on Twitter at Back in the Deck, Instagram at Back in the Deck. Check out our SoundCloud. Um, reach out to me at, um, you know, reach out to me over at uh, Deckers on the Book. You can always talk with me over there. I want to thank the people who are patrons who did the Patreon thing. I want to seriously say thank you to our chat. Um, and yeah, like seriously, thank all you guys for showing up and being here. And um, yeah, one more time, um, just think about these things um, and think about how tough love affects or has affected your life. And if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like because of the circumstances of your birth, be it race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual orientation, your disabilities, or your budget, you just tell them that we said to take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer, saying thank you guys for joining me on the dark side of the room. <laughs>